I'm Maud Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. The, 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 have you ever seen people do that? The, 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 we sometimes see William Buckley, and he talks like the, the, the situation that, that, that I have, and, and, and he, he talks that hesitant way. We don't consider William Buckley a stutterer. I don't, and the people I know don't. But there are those who stutter, and they believe William Buckley stutters. Does William Buckley stutter the way we see him? I, I don't believe so. I, I, when we hesitate, when I hesitate, when, when, when I prolong, the stutterer believes that that is stuttering. We're going to talk about the game of stuttering. I see it as a game, and I see the rules as being developed by individuals who stutter that really have a far-fetched concept, in my opinion, of what the real rules are. Why do people stutter? Why do they go like that? Is it neurological? Is it related to genes? Is it related to heredity? I have my doubts about it. I'd like you to join with me. Stuttering develops basically between the ages of three and seven. And there are those who believe that stuttering is neurological. Something is amiss with the individual who stutters. It's a handicap of some kind. I don't buy that. I believe that stuttering is developed by the way we use our speech and the way people respond to us. Let me try to explain that. There are more males maybe four or five times as many males, kids who stutter than females. And that's true in the general population as well. Why? Is it because males are heir to stuttering more than females? Possibly, but males aren't as refined in speech as females, and their motor co coordination is a little off, I find. I've worked with individuals who stutter over the years, having been the director of the Adult Stutterers Group at Stanford in 1957. And we had a large group of individuals there who were severe stutters. They couldn't get the word out. We ran twice a week, three hours at a time, for a year. And at the end of one year, the improvement was so vast, it was basically unbelievable. Why? If stuttering is neurological, how is it possible for individuals who have the problem to overcome that problem? And did they actually overcome the problem? Yes, they wrote letters and they, they gave, yes, they did overcome it, and they talked about it. We taped them, we explained what stuttering was about or could be about. And what it was about is that they stopped using the squeezed oral musculature and the tension in the lower throat and the pressure on the breathing mechanism. Stutterers do strange things and they do it because they don't know what is right and what is wrong in my opinion. Stuttering develops basically between the ages of three and seven. There are a lot of disfluencies. I call them baubles. I have a book called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. I'm the author of it, and Winning With Your Voice. This is the book, Winning With Your Voice. And it talks about, in part, stuttering, and how we create the stuttering in and by ourselves. How do we do it? We believe that baubles, or the hesitation or prolongation that we have in our speech as we grow up, there are 45 baubles or hesitations, we call them in our field disfluencies, that occur in children per thousand words. And, and they, 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 they do that. When they do that, we all too often think that that is stuttering. It isn't really stuttering. It's very normal speech. Kids just don't know what words to say or the sounds. 
So they, they, they bobble. Bobbling is very normal at a certain stage, especially between the ages of three and seven, when speech is being developed. Didn't you bobble? I guess I bobbled, but nobody told me about it. And if they did, I didn't pay much mind to it. There are those who bobble, and they are told they are told that they shouldn't do that. There are those people who are more sensitive than others, maybe myself, who react and respond to the bobbles within themselves. They may have an articulation problem, and they respond. Why do kids, some kids, respond more than others? Nobody knows. Some are very tender to criticism. Others are not. But this we do know. The bobbles are normal. I would say that nearly all of us would accept that in the field of speech pathology. And though we may not know why one child or one individual begins to stutter and another doesn't, though they come from the same environment and may be criticized for the way they speak, beyond it all, you have to react to your speech pattern to become a stutterer. Why? Stuttering requires that you try to preform your tongue. What do I mean preform? You take the tongue and put it in the mouth and you know you're going to say a certain sound, an S or a TH. And before the sound occurs, you put your tongue there five or ten seconds or a second or two or three before you say the sound. That's called preforming. It's impossible to talk if you preform. But the individual who stutters isn't aware of that. So the individual preforms the tongue, fearing the sound may not come out right. Why he or she fears that? Somebody may have criticized the articulation or the style or the hesitation or prolongation. And the child may go to a rate beyond what he or she can really contain or control. So we, in a sense, outwardly, those about the child, determine and direct the child to a rate or a pattern, or criticize the rate or the pattern or the style, so that the child reacts, becomes psychologically and emotionally uptight about a speech pattern that essentially is normal. But not too many people know that bobbling Hesitation, he hesitation and pro prolongation and re re repetition is normal. So the child reacts to the adult concern or reacts within the child himself, not knowing the bobble or the bobbles are normal. What happens then? Pre-formation. Instead of me saying my name is Mort Cooper, I say, my name, and you can see the tightening of the lips. When you tighten the lips, the whole mechanism goes tight, the body goes tight, the breathing stops or is reversed. Stutterers talk all too often holding their breath. And it's not very easy to talk without air. It's like riding a car with the wheels not having air. It's not very easy doing that. And if you do do it, you're doing the impossible. Stutterers try to do the impossible. They try to talk without air. They try to talk with the tongue up against the roof of their mouth or their lips held tightly. And they try to force the sound out. It's not very easy to do. Stutterers, as they grow up, want perfect speech. There is no such thing as perfect speech. Let me tell you about it. If you have the concept that you can be perfect in speech, you're impossible. There are no perfect speakers anywhere in the world. Take it from me. If you are a perfect speaker, you have no bother.